Uh, I am happy to invite Carlos Palma. He's working with uh, Guadaltel, I hope I pronounced it correct, a company which collaborates with the National Center of Geographic Information of Spain. He's a developer and analyst, and today he's going to share about um, some mobile, some enriched mobile um, apps for trails. So, Carlos, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Paulina. Uh, let me share my screen, one second. Okay. Um, right. Okay, good. So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Carlos, as Codrina said, I'm a software developer and analyst for the company Wadaltel. Um, we work, uh, well, we have a, a lot of background experience. We have been working for 30 years, and we work mainly on the areas of e-government and also uh, geographical information systems, which is my my main area of work. Uh, we have multidisciplinary teams for developing products and solutions to our clients, normally from the project, from the public administration, uh, ranging from European to local institutions and even in collaboration with uh, all the foreign countries, mainly coming from South America. Uh, indeed, we have a, a, an office on Santiago de Chile, so we have a, an international presence. Um, well, um, this product presented here is precisely the result of a collaboration of what I'll tell with the Spain National Center of Geographic Information to reuse and redistribute geospatial information in a, an easy manner, uh, something for everyone to to, de to get access and get uh, a usefulness from it. Well, with this intent, the mobile app, Mapa de España Básico, uh, was born. The main features of this mobile app is to provide a mapping client for field tracking. And it is intended for non-expert users, as I said. Uh, the application offers different cartographic representations of all the Spanish territory and displays it in a very streamlined fashion, adding the most common tools that an user will need during a field trip, road trip, or getting around in a city. Uh, measurements, scales, points of interest, GPS location, uh, some, all those things that you will like on a, on a navigation app. So uh, before going more into the functional details, let's talk a little bit about the, the technological aspects for the backend of this app. Well, we based our development on different visualization services for raster information. Uh, ranging from MB tile services for quicker download times and also for storing uh, information on the device itself. Um, also, uh, WMS and WMTS uh, services uh, for various background layers on the visualization. And we also integrate uh, information for the weather, for, uh, for the weather forecast uh, coming from the IMED, the uh, the agency of Spain for weather forecasting, uh, which they offer an API to be to consume and to be integrated with with other services. All these sources uh, are available for the user to select which one does he want to use at any time. He can configure uh, the application in which way the information is going to be is going to be displayed. Also, uh, the integration is intended for standard services. And this makes it very flexible and extensible to accommodate a, a greater array of data sources. And if, if it is needed in the future, add more, more, more sources, more layers of different services. Uh, so this is about the backend. Then going on the application side and the, the front end, uh, the architecture here is uh, a composite of different components. So the base component for building the application is the Ionic toolkit, 
uh, which is a, a toolkit uh, for creating native apps on, on the main uh, operative system for mobile, Android, iOS, and make it run natively on, on JavaScript. On top of that, um, the, ter the framework that was used to develop in this case was Angular JS, because that way we can ensure uh, the modularity of the code and the extension of components if uh, if the, the needs arise. And then uh, for the map visualization, we are using the API Fenif, that is the um, the open source tool that was developed by the National Center of Geographic Information uh, to generate uh, map visualizations consuming very different uh, sources. So you can consume WMC or KML files, you can consume view services, you can consume download services in different formats in uh, GML, uh, GeoJSON, and then uh, mash up all the layers, uh, selecting which one do you want to use from from the service. If you if you are only interested in, in some of them, and make it an interactive map uh, with the addition of uh, controls and customized plugins to be run uh, over the over the visualization. So you can extend uh, like the main functionalities for measurement. You can extend it to uh, draw polygons and measure areas or something like that. Um, well, that, that is about the, the technological aspects. Also, uh, to be uh, to point out that the development was done with a user first mindset, uh, making the accessibility a main objective, uh, adding multi language capabilities, uh, ensuring the high contrast to. to Better visualization of the application, voice cues on the on the application. So that's a little bit about the the architecture. And then, um, well, that's now that we have covered that. Let's go a little bit deeper on the features and functionalities of the of the application. So the user can select for the online background layers, uh, the IGM based cartographic layer. That is the one provided by the National Institute of Geographic Information. Uh, a street map layer with the uh, road names and addresses. And also a satellite image uh, coming from the from the PENOA. Uh, all these layers uh, are provided by official sources and well, mainly from the from the AGN. And then you can also use the OSM layer. Uh, to map areas inside and outside of Spain. In the case of inside of Spain, then you're going to get a style um, more like a street map. And for outside Spain, you will get the usual style for open street map. Uh, but the main feature of this application is the capability to download all areas of interest at the regional level, to have access uh, to have outlying access to these maps. You can also get maps from, from, the, from the Spanish National Park base for your field trips, for your field trips, sorry. So um, if you are going to go into a region that you are not uh, sure to get a network connectivity or you don't want to activate your, your 5G on your mobile phone, then you can previously download the region that you are interested in and then just load the load the, the layers from there. Then talking more about the tracking functionality, the user has the capability to define waypoints and create a route to, to follow. These waypoints are stored on the on the device itself, so they, they can be retrieved on offline mode. You don't need to upload anything. And then you can have a, a library for all your tracks that you have created. The application is also integrated with the collaborative track service Wiklog. I don't know if there is anyone familiar with the, this service, the, the fans of hiking show there. And um, well, um, load them from, from the user-created tracks to, to your own application. 
Uh, also, uh, you have a set of pretty fine trucks to load that were included on the, that were built in in the application. Uh, we have the Camino de Santiago, uh, the all the trucks on national parks, uh, the green routes that that that, uh, that are the the old uh, railways that now they have been out of use for a long time and they have been uh, reconverted to, to trucks and also uh, El Camino del Cid for, for the historical perspective of, of the of the routes. <laughs> then uh, once you have your, your truck you can activate the GPS, GPS on, on your device and start the follow-up of a loaded truck or even record a new track as you go. If you are just just hiking on the field, then you can just uh, start a new record, uh, go on your on your route as you as you want. And once you have finished, then you can stop the recording, uh, store it on, on your device, or even uh, exporting it and and share it. Uh, while you are on the navigation mode you can have the usual features on this kind of application. So you have waypoints, alerts for along the track for any time you are near a point of interest, then you're going to get an alert. You also get a visual and voice alerts for distances and directions on where you go, where to turn, or which, which way you need to follow. Um, regarding the waypoints, you can generate custom points of interest to add for your tracks, setting your own legend, your own symbology, uh, your own icons. You can create points of interest for your tracks for animal sighting, resting area, restaurants, gas stations, or even places to eat while you while you are hiking. Uh, these waypoints uh, will be integrated on the navigation mode as you go near them and can also they can be also accessible completely offline on your device so again you don't need to upload anything and also um, other useful features for these applications uh, the weather forecast to be safe on your way uh, topographic profile of the area for planning your, your field trip so you, you have a more insight on how the your route is going to be, and also well, very statistics for for your route. So uh, distance that you have covered or you need to cover, uh, the time of your of your of your route, and well, you can even track your your progress and performance on on the track. Um, so so this is the the wrap up. Uh, then again, please, if you are considering go hiking or making a road trip on Spain or visiting a, a city and you want uh, a source of information for that, then give it a try. Uh, as uh, To summarize this, it is a simple and useful way to have official information uh, that is important because all the information is from institutional sources. And then you have it at hand at no cost because the application on, and everything added on, on the on the application or all, all the information is completely free. Uh, wherever you go on your mobile, even if you don't have connectivity. So for anyone that it is interested in the in the application, you can download it already from the Play Store and the App Store. Um, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention, and um, I will answer any question that you may have. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Carlos, for the presentation. Let me first check if there are some questions. Um, bum, bum, bum. I think there are no questions at this point, but I would have one. I couldn't help noticing that it is in Spanish. And uh, is there any um, uh, plan to have an English translation, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. The, well, the, 
Maybe the screenshots were a little bit misleading, but uh, we have the uh, multi-language capability for oh. the application. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then that's perfect because it's uh, it seems like something that I would I would definitely like to to give it a try when I go uh, when I go hiking uh, because you also mentioned that it is possible to use it outside Spain as well if you uh, you'll just have the open street map layer available. Yep. So um, okay, that's uh, that's uh, it's really helpful. Yeah. I will I will give it a try. <laughs> yes, it is it, it is very very easy to to use and. Um, well, the functionality to have everything offline, it is mm, great because, well, you know, sometimes the, you don't have connectivity anywhere. So it is very useful. Especially in the mountains. Yep. We have a question. Uh, can we export tracks and waypoints and what formats are supported for imported tracks? Um, you can import tracks in KML format. Uh, for example, the ones that you download from from Wikiloc are, are in KML format, and you can you can also export it. So you can you can have your your library there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let me check. Um, so I see no more questions. Um, and we have a little bit more time at our disposal. Uh, so uh, if there's nothing you would like to add more, then uh, we can have a very, very short break until nine, uh, my time, 9 p.m. <laughs> until the next presentation. So. Um, well, nothing else, just, uh, mm, well, this application, um, this kind of collaborations with the official uh, organizations are a way maybe to uh, have a more democratic uh, way to access the information that it is not only a monopoly of uh, Google uh, and, and those kinds of, of companies, but uh, to have an alternative to, to support your, your, your own uh, institutions and, and to have uh, free access to, to information. Mm -hmm. And we have a new question. Uh, could you please provide the GitHub URL? Um, right now, I don't have it at hand, but uh, if you, um, well, we have the the GitHub URL for, for the API CMV. Uh, you can access there and you can find the, the everything. So I don't have the, the link for the for the app. I don't have it uh, at hand right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there are no more questions, we'll just uh, wait for a few more minutes until it's time for our next presentation. So I'll just check one more time. Um, okay, no more questions. So Carlos, thank you very much. And uh, keep in touch and of course, enjoy Phosphor G. Thank you very much, Kodrina. Thank you everyone for attending.